It's a plague that no one wants to deal with. Stressed corals, bare spots of skeleton, Acropora eating flatworms. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and this time it's all about the Acropora eating flatworm. Prosciostonum Acropora. Quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed, think about doing it today. So, how can you tell if you have these nefarious little flatworms? They're really small, they're hard to see, less than a centimeter long. They're usually tan or white, sort of oblong worms that'll be found blending in with the flesh of your Acropora. The easiest way to notice them is actually by seeing the bare white spots of skeleton showing up near the bases or the undersides of your Acropora. Now, if you do see these white spots of skeleton, try to remove the coral, try just basting it with a turkey baster or a strong pump, and you'll knock off the flatworms, and then you'll know for sure if I can still be able to see them. Now, I should also mention that there's not really any chemical that you can put in your tank that will let you rid yourself of Acropora eating flatworms. Chemicals like flatworm exit, they'll work, but they won't kill the eggs. So there'll be a whole new set of Acropora eating flatworms that's just gonna be born in a few days, maybe a week or two later. The only sure way to get these things out of your tank is by removing all the affected coral, removing the flatworms with the turkey baster, which it turns out is over 99% effective at removing all of the worms. Uh, and then carefully scrape off any egg clusters that are left before keeping the coral in a quarantine tank and repeating this whole thing for a couple months. And you'll likely have to go through this process several times, but in the end you'll prevail and you won't have acropora eating flatworms anymore. Now there are also some biological controls that might help you with this, uh, namely things like the six lion wrasse. Um, but fish are never going to get all of the flatworms, so you'll be left with at least a small percentage of the original population, which of course is going to flare up as soon as your fish loses interest. Let's take a look at the life cycle of an Acropora eating flatworm. Now, a paper came out recently which actually focused on this, so thanks very much to the authors of the life cycle of the Acropora coral eating flatworm, Osteostonum acroporae the influence of temperature and management guidelines. And thank you for the great illustrations that I'm showing here and throughout this video. So their life cycle is with a lot of things, you know, it all starts with eggs and egg clusters in this case. They're little dark brown clusters that you'll find on either the bare skeleton of the infected coral, uh, but they might also be on the frag plug in case you just have a, a little infected flag frag. So each one of these eggs actually has many eggs in it and can produce up to five flatworms. And you'll bring them in on a frag or a new piece of coral, and then six to 16 days later, they've hatched into cute, tiny little flatworms ready to destroy your entire Acropora collection. So once they hatch, the newborn flatworms mostly crawl around looking for food, but they can also swim if they need to get to a different colony. The thing to remember here is that they'll only survive for one or maybe two days if they don't find any Acropora to eat. Now, once they have found Acropora to eat, they'll continue to munch away, leaving those telltale white circles of skeleton behind. And they'll do this for between 26 to 141 days, depending on the temperature of your tank, before they're ready to lay their own eggs and then the whole process repeats. So this is why it's important to use a second quarantine tank if you do find these flatworms in your tank. It can take a couple months for the complete generation to cycle through, so you'll need to be vigilant throughout that entire time because even though you're going to get rid of most of the worms and you can find most of the eggs, you're not going to catch them all and you need to be uh, catching anything that hatches out. Now, the paper that I mentioned was specifically about the effect of temperature on the reproduction of acropora eating flatworms. So what did they find? Now, it turns out temperature has a huge impact on the hatching success of these flatworms. At 21 degrees Celsius, which is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, Acropora eating flatworms almost don't hatch at all. On the other end of the study, which they did 30 degrees Celsius, 86 Fahrenheit, now there the hatchlings grow almost too fast and then have trouble getting out of their egg capsules because they're too big. Temperature also has a big impact on how long it takes for flatworms to reach maturity. At 21 Celsius, it took over 141 days while at 30 Celsius, it only took 26 days. It might be a good idea to lower the temperature of your reef tanks slowly, don't do this fast, to help battle these flatworms. Our fish and coral can survive at 21 Celsius, but it turns out that acropora eating flatworms will have a really hard time. 
So if you're able to get your tank down that low, this could be a totally valid treatment option for you. 21 Celsius for at least 141 days, while also using a turkey blade baster to blow off any flowers you might see, and you know, maybe add a wraps or two to help eat them, could go a long way towards removing the population in your reef tank, and at the very least, they're gonna die out and not reproduce well at all. One thing to note, there are very similar flatworms that feed on other genera of coral, specifically there's one from Montipora in the same genus. If you see the effects of Acropora eating flatworms on something that's not an Acropora, you should check carefully for these other kinds of flatworms. They look similar. Now these other species are not as common in the hobby as the Acropora eating flatworm, but that doesn't mean they're not around. You could just get lucky, or I guess unlucky. So I thought the paper was really pretty cool. It's linked down below in the description if you want to check it out, and I'd really recommend that you do because it's a really approachable, interesting read and it's open access. Now, I've been lucky to never have these in my tank to deal with myself, but I'm sure some of you have dealt with these pests before. Interestingly, these flatworms were actually first described to science from aquarium specimens, and not, nobody knew where they were in the wild, um, but just recently they found them in the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. So, interesting little tidbit there. Um, I hope you did enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you did get this far in it, and I will see you next time. Bye!